Uh, so, good uh, day once again to the next in our series of the President of the Commonwealth Lawyers Association meets with. And today we're meeting with a, a judge of the Supreme Court of India, who, uh, as you will recall, Judge, I had the pleasure of uh, speaking with you at an event at the Law Society of Singapore back in November. So it's really lovely to see you again. Nice seeing you again. And uh, thank you so much for uh, allowing me to uh, explore how the pandemic is affecting the administration of justice in India from the perspective of a Supreme Court uh, judge. Just on the, the, the issue of mediation, uh, I was uh, sparing your blushes, of course, really impressed by the comments that you made in Singapore, and you clearly have a great sense of the importance of mediation as part of the system of justice available to parties with disputes. Would you like to share just very briefly a thought on your views about mediation generally? Mediation uh, being a, a very important alternate uh, dispute resolution mechanism uh, with the bludgeoning uh, docket in India. Uh, we are always in search of uh, alternate dispute resolutions. Arbitration has uh, become as cumbersome as litigation over the years, in spite of uh, efforts being made uh, to make it easier. People are now looking forward to mediation to settle their disputes. The advantages of uh, uh, mediation over arbitration and litigation uh, are manifold. As of now in India, we see that uh, most of the mediations which are happening are only court-appointed mediations because uh, parties coming to courts, especially constitutional courts, uh, we uh, initially asked the parties as to why don't they mediate. At least they can mediate on certain issues, if not on all issues. And then we send them to trained mediators. We have uh, a section of lawyers who have been trained as mediators. And then uh, uh, for the present, uh, it's not uh, very paying for these mediators because uh, they look at it as a pro bono activity, uh, which I'm sure is going to definitely be much better in the uh, future. Our civil procedure code has a provision which says that before a civil suit is taken up for trial, there is uh, a mandate that the court has to ensure that the parties meet and then try to settle through mediation. Yes. So, Mediation definitely being a, a, a very important aspect of settling disputes and not all cases uh, coming to the courts. Uh, at all quarters, we see that uh, it, it looks very encouraging, but uh, it has really not taken off in this country. It might take some time, but uh, we are trying to do our best to ensure that matters are settled through mediation, especially the, the commercial disputes, there are so many disputes we need not go to courts and uh, in india uh, this is a long drawn process which is litigation and then once a person goes to court he might have to wait for 10 15 years for his turn to come to really uh, finally find a solution yes i know there are uh, just difficulties on the on the speed of justice and uh, sometimes encouraging people to mediation can can get them into a process that addresses their issues um, so you're, you're presently working, are you, Judge, in the Supreme Court, or how has the health crisis been affecting the performance of the Supreme Court? Yeah, we are. Um, the courts uh, have uh, physically been closed uh, from 16th of March, uh, when um, we thought that congregations are going to be a problem. Uh, health-wise, and then thereafter, uh, there was this lockdown which was announced on 22nd of uh, March, and then the lockdown is still continuing. We are in the process of unlocking now. But uh, we have started the uh, courts through video conferencing. Constitutional courts, that is the Supreme Court and the high courts, the 27 high courts in this country, are all doing their job through video conferencing, but uh, I should say, as digitization of records has not been completed in this country, 
we are taking up at present uh, only very urgent matters where uh, people come to court for bails uh, if they are under trials or convicts yes. or certain uh, public interest litigations which pertain to the welfare of people so these are the matters which uh, we took up for about one one and a half months initially we were functioning only uh, four of us were functioning in two courts two divisions but for the past three weeks all of us have started functioning. We sit in a division of three judges each. Uh, the strength of the Supreme Court is 33 plus one, one Chief Justice, 34. We sit in a division of three, and about 11 courts function. Five courts function on one day, and the next day it will be the six courts which will function. We have started up taking, we have started taking the matters which have been pending. We are also starting taking up matters which have been filed earlier. Yes. But everything is happening through video conferencing. Trials have, are not happening in civil courts because you need people to go to courts. We're trying to avoid those. But in trial courts also, that is the lower courts, the magistrate courts and the civil courts. Wherever a case can be heard through video conferencing, they're trying to do their best, but I'm not very sure that it is effective. The flip side of this is that uh, the legal professionals are not really very happy with uh, what is happening because uh, physical filing of cases uh, which involves clients coming to them which is not happening now because transportation is not there. In the absence of that, uh, there is no enthusiasm in the legal professionals to file new cases. So not everybody gets to work during these uh, three months, four months. So there is a demand that uh, we reopen the courts physically. I will tell you the example of the Supreme Court of India. The footfall on uh, Mondays and Fridays where we take up fresh matters is uh, around 10,000 in the court corridors. Mm -hmm. So we are afraid if we uh, start physical functioning of courts, uh, we are inviting corona. Uh, from the courts itself. We don't want to start it in the court premises. Uh, yeah. We are trying very hard to find out methods of effective functioning. So this lockdown has definitely affected uh, the functioning of courts, but we are trying to make the most of it by using technology. Yes, I was going to say that uh, in other jurisdictions, there uh, is a more advanced form of e-filing of documents and some courts, um, for example, the UK Supreme Court has, for some years now, had the capacity to live stream hearings. And, and, uh, and of course, that then addresses the public's right to access the courts. Have you had any um, online applications or hearings or case management conferences? Yes, during the initially when we started video conferencing, all uh, cases were filed uh, uh, through e-filing. And uh, we were asking uh, people who were filing cases to serve papers uh, uh, through email on the other side. To tell you about e-filing in India, 2014-15, we started this project of e-filing in the Supreme Court. And uh, for some reasons, the digitization of records is not complete in the uh, country. We have about 730 districts uh, in India, India being a very big country. Through the NIC net, all the courts are connected. So, uh, at the touch of a button, we know uh, how many cases are being filed in any court in this country, what is the disposal of cases there, and uh, for how many years are cases pending. So, all this information is available. But the problem is uh, because the digitization is not complete, we are not able to completely operate on uh, the uh, e system. We have also introduced uh, the artificial intelligence, as I told you earlier when we were having an informal chat. Yes. Uh, the present Chief Justice of India, Justice Bobde, has introduced uh, this uh, artificial intelligence into administration of justice. We have several languages in India. Records in various states, in the lower courts, would be in the vernacular language. I see. As I those cases come up to the higher courts. Translating those records would be a very serious problem. And that was taking a long time. Mm. Huge record and then translation was taking a long time. 
we have introduced uh, uh, a mechanism for translation of records through artificial intelligence. So we have now a module which translates these records from a particular language into English, which is happening faster now. We have already introduced and it has been working. About 500 judgments have been already uh, translated and it's taking off. We also called, we also have a system by which the process automation is made easy for filing of cases, categorization of cases, including helping the judges to understand the facts of the case, the judgment, the law that is involved in the case. We have a program called SUPACE, Supreme Court program, which uh, has uh, frequently ask questions, about 100 questions. Let us take there is a, a motor accident uh, claim. And we know what would be the uh, questions that would arise in that case, apart from the facts, when the accident took place, what is the nature of the uh, injury, and thereafter, when was the FIR recorded, all these. So at the click of a button, the judge would be having all the facts without going into the record, voluminous record, because by the time the case comes to the Supreme Court, it, is, it becomes voluminous including the judgments on the points that are available, making things easier. So we are trying to utilize artificial intelligence for the purpose of speedy disposal of cases and making it easy for judges. But one thing that is made clear is, like in uh, England and the other countries, where artificial intelligence is used even to deliver judgments uh, as to what would be the fine to be paid. I think minor traffic offenses and matrimonial cases are being decided. We have made it clear that whatever has to be done by the judge through by using this uh, mind will be done by him. We are using yeah. artificial intelligence for this. But we, we realize the importance of uh, using the technology for the purpose of finding uh, answers to so many questions in the legal uh, system here in this country. Yeah. We have about uh, 3.27 crore cases pending in India which means 32 million cases that are uh, pending in this country. And uh, for disposal of all these cases, even if no case, new cases are filed, it's going to take 200 years. So we'll somehow or the other revolutionize uh, the yeah. method of uh, justice, delivering justice. Um, uh, I mean, uh, in any discussions I have with, uh, of course, the CLA's uh, former president and my great friend, Santan, uh, it's always amazing this, the scale that India operates at in terms of the number of lawyers, the number of cases, the, the number of, of, of judges and the, the sheer uh, vast numbers that are involved. And you're giving a, an insight as to how technology might assist. Um, I think a lot of lawyers would support your judge in saying that you don't want to substitute the judge's intelligence with some artificial intelligence. and uh, I, I'm afraid just in terms of the time that we have got, I will I, I'll simply conclude with uh, uh, remarking that I understand that your home city was uh, and is Hyderabad, yes. uh, if I'm right, and uh, that was my first experience of Commonwealth law uh, conferences and uh, I have very, very fond memories of the city of Hyderabad, uh, the, the, the hotel, complex that we were in, but also the, the old fort and the, uh, the venue for our uh, closing reception. Uh, so whenever uh, Hyderabad is mentioned, it brings me a very, a very sort of positive and very warm recollection. Um, I don't know whether you get back to Hyderabad at all to, to, or have you left it completely? No, my daughter is there, so I keep going. My daughter lives in Hyderabad. I see. And in hometown, I have to go there. And I also remember uh, the fond memories we had because I was with Santan then. Uh, Are you indeed? Then. Yes. No, it was, it was fantastic. The security, whenever the, uh, the Chief Justice of Pakistan arrived on the opening uh, reception, it was truly fantastic. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, look, uh, thank you very much indeed, Judge, for sharing those thoughts on the way that things are going. For the purposes of this uh, recording, the, the CLA family will be interested to hear uh, this perspective from the Supreme Court of India. So thank you very much. 
I will uh, stop the recording now and we'll continue our chat in a moment. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak to you. And I hope uh, all the members of the uh, Commonwealth Lawyers Association, as well as uh, lawyers in those uh, member countries, uh, should do well. All the best and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.